Good evening. Have you heard of something called the bystander effect? That's what I want to talk about today. It's Valerie Ling, clinical psychologist, director, founder of the Center for Effective Living. Today is the National Day of Action Against Bullying and Violence. We say no to bullying. By now you should have seen, I hope, a couple of things churning through your, your newsfeed and your social media that uh, gives a voice, raises an awareness to say zero tolerance for bullying. Well, I want to talk today about something I'm noticing even in my own circles in social media. And that is somehow anonymity and uh, just being able to post something or interact with someone in a forum where you're not seeing the person and where, uh, you know, somehow there's, there's we, we cut through our social inhibitions and we can sometimes get to the point where we're actually targeting and victimizing um, the people on our feed or, or whom we're interacting with. Well, the bystander effect is, is a phenomenon actually um, in social psychology. If any of you have a, a psychology background and are watching this, you might remember learning about this, the bystander effect. In the 1960s, late 1960s, uh, there was an observation and then uh, some experimentation and research done into the reason why is it that in certain situations where an individual is requiring, requiring help, people who are standing by or the bystanders seem to be paralyzed and in some instances, in a lot of times, help isn't given. Well, there are a couple of situations where the bystander effect happens. Somehow it seems that when you're in a room with other people witnessing, uh, uh, witnessing something happening to another person, um, someone's in danger uh, or, or something not right is happening. But when there are other people around, particularly if there are large numbers of people around, we, the individual, the person, we seem to get paralyzed. We kind of go into the space where we think nobody else seems to be moving or acting maybe it's not really as bad as I think. We go into this paralysis of analysis. We're kind of not sure. We're waiting to see how things might pan out. Maybe we then start to minimize the situation and think, well, if nobody else is doing something, then maybe it's okay. That person is actually all right. And as the seconds turn into minutes, and now with social media, the minutes turn into hours, tick tock, tick tock. The person who actually is undergoing that particular situation where we're all standing by is actually really having a hard time. And in the case of the bystander effect, um, what actually initiated the research was that serious crimes were being committed and nobody came to help. The bystander effect, I think, is very much alive and well in social media. Um, if you look at cyberbullying, for example, how is it? that uh, we can get away or people can get away with comments, targeted, specific, frequent, reoccurring uh, comments, um, horrible comments, and it can go by unnoticed and unstopped. Maybe it's the bystander effect. So I'm gonna post the link um, with this video for you to look at a social media research piece that um, basically gives some tips about what we can do ourselves in our own space as we reflect on how we interact with one another, how we actually say no to bullying, how we actually start to realize that we start, that there's a normalization of, of, that there is a normalization of just being plain, old, mean, nasty, and vindictive, um, and targeting people, whether we see it happen in young people's lives or whether it happens in our world as well. So number one, we've got to be able to notice, right? We can't get to the point where we're so desensitized that stuff is going around and we're no longer noticing. So we've got to actually pull back, step back, let it sink in and notice. This isn't right. This isn't making another person feel right. This is actually going to push someone over the edge if we don't stand up for it. So we've got to notice. Number two is we've got to come up to certain definitions and figure out when things have gone too far or when they're creeping to the edge of going too far. We've got to notice that an emergency is right in front of us. We've got to notice. We've got to analyze it. We've got to start to interpret it. 
it's no longer okay for us to just stand by and let the one comment, the two comments, the three comments, the four. it's no longer okay. We've got to say, that's not normal. There's, that isn't just someone blowing off steam. Number three, we've got to take ownership and take the responsibility that we've, we can make a difference. We can help. I was talking to a young person today, actually. This is why I came up with the idea for the bystander effect. And I was, um, I can't remember how the conversation started, but anyway, um, this young person actually said to me, oh, actually, we were taught in school that being a bystander is akin to actually being the bully yourself. And I was like, whoa, tell me more. And this young person said to me that if you can see that someone is being bullied and you don't step in, then you're actually taking on the side of being a bully too. And they were talking about how they were taught to override some of that bystander effect. You know, if you're in a playground and you're watching this stuff happen and nobody else is stepping in, you might start to think, oh, well, it must be okay. Somebody else is going to help. And they were taught a couple of steps. And one of which was simply either go and get help or two, go and scoop the person who's being bullied out of the situation and divert and redirect the attention. You know, simple things like that. But we've got to take responsibility. And four, now here's the thing I, mean, I think we, we need to be thinking about. Four, what can we decide to do? This takes some pre-thinking, right? This takes us actually digging into our own sense of what's right and wrong being creative and being resourceful and being wise about steps that we can take. Do we reach out through a private message? Do we reach out by actually having a conversation and saying, hey, I'm noticing that you're you're not wanting to get on your phone or go online very much anymore. Hey, I'm noticing that when that interaction happened, uh, that that really got you feeling down. I'm not saying that every incidence is an incidence of bullying, but I'm talking that when it's targeted, when it's specific, when it's repeated, and it keeps and it, it's obviously impacting someone we've got to actually decide how we're going to take that action and then we're going to need to act you know the bystander effect is not new it's been around for a while but it's taking new forms isn't it it's taking new forms and it takes you and i to say no to cyberbullying saying no to letting it slip by giving the responsibility to someone else who's got a better idea of what to do you and I, we've got to start figuring it out. And you and I, we've got to stop standing by. And as this young person said, said to me, it's, we can't be bystanders. We've got to be upstanders. I'll leave you with that this evening. Bye.